Let's begin. Cherish the spirit, create the vision, follow the faith, serve in humility. Thank you so much. And so as always, uh, today we're going to have another great day, I hope, and that you are all working diligently. Uh, it is now the first week of May, right? So it's already the fifth month of the year, right? Almost almost the halfway point uh, of our whole one year has passed. And so I'm wondering, what have you guys been doing so far? I, you know, doing well? How's your business? Have you made any progress from where you are, right? I think it's a great time for us to now take a step back and reflect think about where we are now and think about where we want to be and see if we've actually uh, achieved some of the goals we set out for ourselves. And if we haven't, then why are we not able to? What is stopping us from achieving those goals? And so today we have another great guest uh, speaker. It is the part uh, four, I believe, for this series. And it is done by our amazing Royal Master, uh, Sa Jae Young. And so if you can all pay attention to him as he spent a lot of his time to create all of this information for us. And this is something he personally experienced and has done for himself to grow his business to where he is. And he is sharing this information now to you guys so you can also have the benefit of success as he's done in his business. So if we can give him a very uh, big round of applause as we watch his uh, video and uh, really give him our full attention. For, for this lecture. Hello, everyone. It's great to see everyone today. And so today we're going to do a continuation of last time of the system lecture. And after this time, we'll just have one more lecture uh, next time. And so thank you all for uh, following along. And so last time we covered lesson four. And so we're going to cover lesson five, which is the habits of success, uh, which is the explain the business. And so it includes explaining the company, ex explaining the products, and all of those included. And so the show the plan is the STP, or it means explain the business, or show the products, or even called show the, show the people. And so this SCP is essential to your business. And so why is it so important? In order to be successful in Adam, we need to create business owners. And so without doing the this STP, we can't create business owners. If we just use the products, then we just create consumers. But they don't, if you don't, show them about the company, about the vision, then they're just going to be a consumer for 10 years and don't know anything about the business. And who is responsible for that? That means that you need to be responsible for that. In order to share with them, it's your responsibility. And that means that the consumer is the one that's missing out because of you. And so this is a must have and must do for your any your business. And so you need to become a master of one-on-one -on -one business explanations. And so back then when we were stuck with someone, we'd have to listen to the product presentation for about two hours. But now a lot of the things has become better and much easier to uh, digest. And so when we meet someone, then we can 
talk about the products, the business, and things like that, but don't do all of them. Instead, we give them a little bit of information bit by bit to show them the bigger picture of the business. And so another way to say, explain the business is to show off the business, show off the sponsor, show off the company and the chairman. So we can say that, oh, our refund rate is very low and we have uh, been on the news multiple times. And so we can share this with our consumers and our uh, uh, boast about our sponsors. And so, you can't try to achieve all of the things uh, by thinking that, oh, they're going to attend the seminars, buy four boxes of Hemolines, and join right away. And you're just going to end up disappointed. If you try to solve at what just with one sitting explaining everything and if you share it when a group setting then you could actually uh, end up having a lot of issues instead you want to share a little bit by bit one-on-one -on -one, and it has to become a habit And so you have to have a habit of uh, boasting about the company. And then after that, then you introduce the sponsors. And so from the sponsors, you show your people, show your members. And so there was someone that said that, oh, sponsor, please come. I have someone I want to introduce. But then when I was brought over, they said that, oh, who are you? And they have never been introduced about me. And so they said that, oh, I, they didn't uh, tell them about me because they didn't want to be like, oh, I don't want to meet your sponsor. And so instead of working in the best interest of that partner, in fact, it worked opposite. And so now that person felt even more uncomfortable. And so you can't expect your sponsor to do everything for you. And so if you're trying to uh, tell them to uh, prepare a meal and you just give them nothing to prepare with, then it's your fault. So you need to do the proper procedures to prepare. And so you need to do your one-on-one -on -one business explanation before you introduce them to your sponsors. And so you do one-on-one -on -one company introductions a little bit by little bit. And from there, you start to think, okay, now I should start to introduce them more about uh, the business and the sponsors. And so instead of you personally introducing the products and the company, you use your sponsors.
And so you can say, oh, my sponsor, they're able to reach uh, the level of where they are be within such a short period of time and they work really hard. And then you bring them naturally saying, oh, I will invite you over to where my sponsor is. And so you use their leverage of an expert to show the product uh, information. This is super effective. And so you make a decision uh, within three months uh, you're going to share 30 with 30 people. You're going to sh uh, show the plan, show the plan, show the people, show the products. Uh, so you choose 30 people and you're going to do those th three things with those three, 30 people over the course of 30, uh, three months. And so you need to set a goal and a mission for yourself then you'll start to see actual results. And so if you're doing this for about three months with those 30 people, then at least five to 10 people are going to come out interested in the business. And so if you don't do this, then you're not going to have anyone uh, come out. And if you just do this uh, half-heartedly, then you could even just have no one come out or even just very few consumers. And so this is something I've done myself personally, and that's why I'm sharing it with you. And so try to set the goal for that for yourself. And so when you do a one-on-one -on -one business explanation, if you talk about everything at one time, then it can be very overwhelming. And so I'm separating it into different parts that you can introduce it to those uh, consumers and members. And so you can ask them, oh, what do you think about Atomy? He's like, oh, isn't that a network marketing? And so then that gives you an idea that, oh, they think that this is a network marketing business. then now you show them a difference between the pyramid schemes that they know and what's the difference between Atomy and how uh, trustworthy that Atomy is. And so you need to understand why they can't look at Atomy as a business. And so understand their needs. And so we talk about the uh, Euler's law, which is using Atomy's leverage. And so this is done by a very famous uh, Harvard's uh, university professor. And so if you try to lift up the five rocks here by yourself, then it can be very difficult. But if we use the sponsor as the leverage point, then you can lift even more than five stones. And so we use the strength of the sponsors. And so your customers, if they are your friends or family members, they're not going to look at you as an expert. Even our chairman, Hangul Park, said that, oh, he goes out to friends' gatherings and then he treats them to food. And so even though they're their friends, don't you think that they should be Atomy members as well? But not many of them are Atomy members. They're just friends. And so they just treat him as a friend, but they don't really think of it as a big business.
and so they think that you're just their friends their family member but if you use their sponsor's strength amount depending on how much you boast about it and if you understand using the Hoyler's law then it can make it so much easier then your anatomy business can become much better And so we can call this the rules of A, B, C. And so A is the sponsor, B is the bridge, and then C is the customer. Right? And B is bridge as in yourself. And so your job is to promote the sponsor to the customer. Who is the sponsor? And then you need to... Uh, make them kind of show them who they are and their expertise and so in the past that they did their own business and they rejected atomy but now that they did atomy that they're now making more than twenty thousand a month in the royal leaders club and they're able to do well explanation wise and so why don't you try listening to them and you just continue to share with them and then the customer will start to think that, oh, who is this sponsor? Maybe let me try to meet them. And so the second thing is that you need to uh, promote your partners. There's some people who can't do this. And so you need to promote your partners uh, quite often with your sponsors. And then you can also uh, talk briefly about them. It's like, oh, they own a hair salon. They love the uh, foam cleanser. And they love the ample to kind of give the explanation to your sponsors so that they know what they uh, are like. And if you give that tip to the sponsor, then they can give a right explanation that the customer needs to hear. And so the sponsor's job is now then to explain the business. And so in the fourth part is to create an environment. And so let's say you do it at the center, then it's fine. So when you do it in your house, and let's say you're doing it in the office of your house, there's been times where that they're listening to a, a phone call because they received it. And then they'll just leave saying that, Oh, I have to leave now because of the things. Or like if you have a dog roaming around, then while they're focused, if a god dog comes out, then they're going to start to pay attention to the dog instead of actually listening to you. And even the people that invited, uh, which is you, they might start to make like a food and they're busy setting up a whole meal and then it can become a very big distraction And so it's, I think, important for us to, uh, as the bridge, need to remove all those uh, obstacles that will 
cause us to uh, our customers not to be able to focus. And so even one of our sponsor, it was for uh, a business explanation. But then a random stranger kept calling them. And so they called that number after the uh, explanation with the customer. And so that person's uh, mind was more important, focused on the customer instead of the phone call because the phone call was saying that, oh, I scratched your call, car. And so that person who he talked to is now uh, entering a leader's club and is an amazing feat that changed his life from that meeting. And so don't try to distract your customers with food or these dogs or phones. Make sure you keep those things away. And then lastly, don't try to do a follow-up meeting with them. And so if you brought them into the center and the sponsor was the one talking to the customer and you promoted them to your partner, uh, your customer, then now you need to do a follow-up meeting with them. And so once you listen to the company information, then you start to feel more up and, and emotionally and feel more excited to listen. And so in order to break their mindsets of still being feeling doubtful is to invite them to a big seminar like the one day seminar. But instead of missing this opportunity, after the sponsor explains, you just drag them out and try to do your own follow-up meeting is a big mistake. And so at church, there's these type of people who dress really well and they uh, are always there, but then at the very end, they leave early because they don't want to wait a long time when the cars are all leaving from the parking lot. And just because of that small thing, they don't finish uh, the final prayer, which is helps them at the end receive their full blessing. And so that's doing all this steps one to five is very important. And by utilizing the Hoyler law, then you can make your business flow even better. But then those who don't do the steps, they try to work hard, but something is not working in their business. And so the at times where A, B, and C does not work is that, let's say, the customer doesn't have a proper understanding of the sponsors or they don't have the respect because you didn't do the job to build that respect. And so doing each step is very important. And there's also those who do it reverse toiler. And so then they start to boost this person that they're going to start to show. It's like, oh, you know, what, uh, who am I going to, I'm, they know someone who is really rich, right? They're a very big club member. And 
And so you go to your sponsor and say, like, oh, don't talk to them about Atomy being in network marketing. Or that, that, oh, let's not invite them to the seminar because they don't have time. And so instead of the sponsor becoming the focus and the leverage point, they're asking this partner to be the one to be catered. And so instead of meeting with the sponsor, they're telling the sponsor to come to them. The partner needs to be the, you need to be the one to guide the partner to your sponsor. But if you tell your sponsor to come, then it reverses everything. It's not about feeling bad, but it's just that they can't use the Hoyler's law. Because if you tell them to come, then now you're building a business backwards and they're not going to respect your sponsor. And from there, it's going to be a bad decision to make. And so from there on, that person will already look down on Atomy and you and your sponsor. And so don't make this big mistake. And so as an early business owner, you need to show the people. And so by quickly showing these people to your sponsors are the ones that quickly succeed. And those who make a big mistake uh, is to have it hosted in, in in different places that are uh, not suitable for the STP, like the coffee shop or a restaurant. So then their mindset is that, oh, they're just going to meet their friend, talk for a coffee and have some food. But do you think that you're going in a proper place to show them about the product or to talk about Atomy? No. Obviously not. You're just going to be rejected right there. So very important, your location of choice. If you just meet at a coffee shop and restaurant, just uh, listen to their needs, but don't talk about Atomy. And so that way, maybe next time you could probably properly deliver about Atomy. So don't quickly bring Atomy up when it's not ready. And so many people make a big mistake and lose a lot of people through this process. That they meet it at a, a bar. And so don't make this mistake. This is such a big opportunity to change their life. So don't think that you can just share this opportunity at a bar or a restaurant thinking that it's going to influence them to uh, learn. And so when you are meeting with a client and this, you don't do the sponsor promotion enough, then it's like serving them a meal that's not yet fully cooked. So make sure you do both. And especially if you invite them to like a one day seminar, don't leave them alone, right? Just tell them that, oh, okay, you can sit at the front because there's no other space. I'll sit at the back right behind you. Don't leave them and then thinking that you already know everything and that you don't need to be there. Because if you do that, then they're going to be like, oh, I can't trust this person who just left me here, uh, even though I think the Atomy is great.
And make sure you set your phone and messaging apps to silent so that it avoids any distraction during the meetings. Because if they start to reply to their messages and your messages, then they're going to miss all the information. And so make sure that you uh, stress how important it is for them to keep it on silent for during the duration of the meeting. And so there's some certain points that we need to be aware of during the business meetings. Uh, do not give them like uh, catalogs or things like that, showing them. They just look through without paying attention. And so they, instead of listening to the uh, lecture speakers, they're just focused on the pamphlet. So instead of showing them right away, show them at a later time after the meeting is over. And so during the follow-up meetings, You want to let the sponsor be the ones to take the lead. But instead, if you step in and then you start to interrupt the sponsor explanation, then it could be very uh, counterproductive. It's, and so you, when the sponsor asks, oh, how do you feel about it? And then the person's going to respond, oh, how I feel. But right before you, they answer, the, you interrupt them, then it's going to ruin all the hard work you built up. And also don't talk about useless things in between the sponsors uh, talking. Like, oh, how's your wife? Or, oh, you remember our past? We had like such a great time. And so it's such a waste of time and it makes the sponsors very upset. And so, you know, when your sponsor invites them to the next meeting and then uh, they reply that they're busy, instead of you uh, motivating them to come, if you say that, oh, yeah, you're so busy, uh, okay, I understand, yeah, you probably can't come, then it's just going to not uh, help in that situation and want them to visit. And so then that means that you're just ruining an opportunity that is almost set, fully uh, set up. So instead, just let your sponsors do the work and you just have to remain quiet. Only when the sponsor is inviting them to the next meeting that you should actively help It's like, oh, you know, oh, you might be really busy, but, you know, it might be a life-changing experience. I'll come pick you up. 
right? And so that's when you should step in to pull them through and finalize the deal. And so even if they can't come uh, this month, invite them the next month and set at least two dates. And so once you do uh, all this business explanation, now you need to learn how to do sponsorship. So this is all connected. So once you do the uh, sponsorship, you need to follow up and follow through. So 25% of it is to meet and invite, 25% is to company intro, and then the last 50% is the sponsorship, which is the most important. And so you need to continue to meet and improve the, their business vision of that. And so you need to follow up. But instead of following up with them, you can follow down and you can destroy the vision that you built up with them. And so don't go there with a sponsor who's also uh, very down. So bringing the right people for this is very important. And so the first meeting is also important to do within 48 hours of the first time you meet. Not through your phone, but through physical contact and meeting them face to face. And so only make appointments over the phone. And we should have all the meetings face to face because we want to express and understand each other through our facial expression. And so no matter how long you talk over the phone, that person might just be doing something else over the phone. And so we are a business that requires us to go meet and talk. Or you can invite them and meet and talk, either or. And while you're doing a meeting, empathy and listening is really important, which is the M3E7, which is to talk 30% and listen 70% of the time. Even if you are really passionate about explaining about atomy, if you just talk to them about atomy for about one hour, 30 minutes, all about only atomy, that person will never want to speak to you again. They're gonna just say that, oh, why don't you just talk to the wall instead, right? People, you have to converse, not just one-sided. And so if you just immediately uh, talk over them and never listen, then it's not going to be a very great time for your customers. So be sure to uh, invite them to the Success Academy, which is your goal after you show them the products and show them the plan, show them the business. And so you can't force them to do the business. It's only up to them. But you help them understand Atomy the proper way, and that is your duty. And so you need to invite them to the Success Academy. And so it's up to them whether they're going to do it or not. And let's not uh, do too much consideration because that is also an act of stealing opportunity. And so in order to become a uh, success academy, you need to invest time and uh, pay the price, which is your time, your money, your efforts, your eating food together and efforts, that's all needed to do that. Because the success academy can be a point where it could completely change their life.
And so if you think that your mentality is that, oh, I'm only making about $2,000 a month, but my friend is already making $5,000, they're probably not interested, then obviously you're not going to be able to convince them with that kind of mentality. You need to think of it as a big business so that you can invite them. It's like, oh, take a break from work, come to this place. If Adam is truly a big business in your mind, then you need to think that way. That Adam is at least worth one day off from their work to attend the Success Academy. And so now you follow through after the Success Academy. And in order to do that, in order to have them succeed, you want to sponsor them with a vision. And so there's some different types of uh, sponsorships like time, uh, distance, number of times. You got to think of it as uh, investments, not be of calculation. And so it's such a big investment for those overseas because you guys have to travel such far distance. But for us in Korea, many of them are very uh, lazy because even three hour drive is too far for them. Even though, even some of them, which is 30 minutes, but it's too far for them. And so as a Atomi business owner, that time, distance, number of times and cost is all something you need to invest in. And so you need to also uh, drive, build your driving depth and focus on your growth points. And so if you are able to create those growth points, then you want to sponsor those growth and growing points. And it's also be sure to establish regional basis to provide regular, continuous, end-to-end -end service and support in each area. And so if you do like, oh, come to this shop, come to this restaurant next time, then there's never going to be a, a proper continuous support. And then if you're able to increase the number of seminars and attendees on a three-month basis, and expand the sponsored area. That's the kind of goal that you want to do in that re each region. And so let's say there's, you know, uh, people that were working hard in Canada, but now it's uh, opened up in US in your partners. So don't th think about like, oh, I'm going to invest in too much money trying to meet my partners in the U.S. This is all part of your business. So you got to think of your partner's codes as your own codes and start to sponsor them like it's your own code business. And so what is the growing point? In plants, it's a growing point at the end, and they continue to grow. And so the early growing point is those people who like and introduce a product. So they love products, and they love to share it with their friends. And so the business growth point is those people 
who can move their body in accordance to the system and make decisions uh, to change for change and can coordinate a teamwork with them. It's like, oh, I have a partner in the U.S. Oh, okay, I'll visit them, and they don't have any sort of issues visiting their partners. And so if you think too big about like, oh, how I'm going to invest, then in the grand scheme of things, when you're able to make $10,000, $20,000 in Atomy per month, those $100 is going to be nothing to you at that time. So you need to be able to move your body so that you can truly change your business. So what does it mean to hold on to that growing point? And so let's say there's a B member that came out. And so then it's like, oh, B, you now have a partner in C. So you just uh, sponsor that C area. But instead, you think that, oh, that C is actually a decent partner. So instead of don't leaving it to B to do, this is your business. You just hold on to the growing points and sponsor the places that grow. Because if you start to think that, oh, isn't this bee's leg, that they should be the one to do it? No, you are the sponsor. So you want to hold on to the places that are growing and do it with them. And if you're able to truly understand this, then you can do the business properly. And then you start to do the one, three, three, in order to be successfully sponsoring. Then you can make business leaders within that timeline. And you can easily become a sales master at the end of it. And so I made a schedule here. And so I make I meet about 10 people within the first week. And then within the second, I make another 10. And on the third, I meet another. Head. And so if I meet them within the whole month, there's people I might not be able to meet three times a day, but I plan that schedule, then you'll do about 70 meetings. And you're not trying to sell products during those 70 meetings. Don't make a mistake thinking that I'm telling you to sell every person that you meet. And that alone will make push pressure on you. Because if you think that, oh, if I only just talked with them, then I didn't make any progress. But you don't have to worry about that. And like, oh, they might, if you continue to think that, oh, they rejected me again and things like that, then you're never going to be able to do it 70 times. And that is the door-to-door -door sales mentality. You need to quickly remove that mentality because Atomy is not a door-to-door -door sales, but we are a human network business. And so you need to invest in a little bit to open up their trust to you, you know, whether that is for them to try out the products and you share that products. And so you can build that meeting schedule. And so I have a, a neighbor schedule here. I've done this for eight years now, since my beginning of this business. And so in the beginning, I spent a lot of time uh, doing product explanations, product demos. But now I have a different type of meetings. Instead of product demos, I do business meetings with my partners. And so we even have the 2021 or 2023 
uh, whatever year you have, you can make this format and then do this for yourself, not for your sponsors as a homework check, but for yourself so that you can succeed. And so those of us who actually do a schedule uh, for the WEN33 business uh, meeting schedule, they actually start to look back and see that, oh, what I've missed and what I'm doing well. And so if they have a reason, then they will start to write it down. And even for myself, I only had a few people in the beginning. And over time, I was able to fill this out completely. And so this is my full schedule. And so there's the 10 commandments for the sponsorship uh, for startup entrepreneurs. And so we need to uh, be able to have that proper uh, leverage. And so there's going to be a person who just only looks for business people. And so these kind of people, their sales are usually weak uh, and they're feeling the burden when challenged for a mastership for oneself or a partner because all they look for is business members. And so all of these people are only just talking about the vision but not really using any of the products. And so the other person on the other spectrum is a person who only sells products. And so they're not many partners. They're not plugged into the system. They don't have a proper organization are, and very stagnant because all they do is try to sell and their teamwork is weak. And so there's people who just attend the Success Academy uh, very shortly, and then they try to run away in between. Uh, Academy is a network business, meaning network is so important. We're not trying to sell the products. You need to combine both the business aspect and the aspect of selling. And so being, uh, doing sponsorship is to equal to buying your partner's love. So you need to be generous. And so you need to earn their trust. And when you're doing one, three, three meetings, it's always good to prepare small products or gifts for them to experience. And so if they, if you do this over time, then they're going to be like, oh, you remember that? The product you gave me last time, it was so great. Can you uh, give me one? I'll buy from you. Or that coffee that you gave me last time, it was really great. Can I buy a box from you? And that's the way you're going to uh, give them that experience and open up their minds. And so don't try to put an expectation but just naturally do it over and over again, then they'll start to show the results of your investment. And also don't only just talk about Atomy every time you meet. But one time talk about Atomy, and another time when you're meeting, talk about their family, their occupation, their recreation, their, uh, their money. And so do it in that format. And so you need to have like a push and pull just like in any sort of relationship. And so during our conversation, you could have all kinds of topics on your conversation, but one of the topics you can talk about during the many times you meet them could be about Adam.
And so there is also a called a law called the critical mass law. And so the, while they're doing the one through three, they might think that, oh, I don't have any sort of real progress, but they don't even use any of the products. Those kind of people, they're not really plugged into the system. And so they give up just like this person because they think it's a waste of time. And so while digging for their treasure, they leave. And then instead, someone else comes and steals that treasure. And so there was one member who gave up their partner, and then another person uh, met them. They're like, oh, they're already a team leader. And so they quickly did their best to support that partner and made them into uh, even bigger leaders. And so we have the Moso bamboo tree. And so in the beginning, they only grow about three centimeters. For four years, it takes them to grow just three centimeters. And many people think, they, oh, it's just ended. But instead, it grows really deep in the roots. And after the fourth year, it starts to grow around 30 centimeters every day after the fourth year, and it grows up to 25 meters. And so many people call this the quantum leap. And so it took me about five years in the five years, I only grew about 30 centimeters. And now from there on, I was able to leap all the way up to Royal Master. So anyone can do it. If you're just uh, very continuous and you don't give up and you just do it all the way to the end. And so through their customers, you build them into part-time business owners. And then from the part-time business owners, you find the true uh, people who want to do this full-time as a business owner. And then you make those people into your seven core network members. And then you create three teams on each side. And that's how you become a auto leader, auto sales master. And so like if you go up to Diamond Master, you do three sales masters on the left and right, and the same for the other levels. You need at least three mem team members on the left side, on each side, so that you can become an auto team leader or team member. Another thing would be to have a business growth checklist the how many people attend the line meeting, how many people attend the seminar and the Success Academy on your left and right. And you can do a, a kind of monthly checklist of who attend. And so I'll be talking about consultation the next time. And so today I talked about the company introduction, and sponsorship is from this point on, this is the business aspect of the company. And so when you look at Adam, he's like, can you do the show the plan, show the product, show the people? If you're able to do these three things, determine whether you can find people you can actually sponsor. If you don't have anyone to sponsor, then you have nothing to write on the 133. All you do is just think about who you're gonna call, who you're gonna contact. It's gonna take you three to five years and you're still gonna have nothing to show for your growth. And so once you decide on to do the 133, that's when you start to plan your life scenario and why you need to do it. And so what is your reason? You need to quickly find that reason.
if you have the why of what you're doing atomy, then you can naturally do the STP. And so just like when we do the three minute speech, you do that speech to everyone you meet. And that's the first step to doing your business. Don't talk about anatomy is like this, blah, blah, blah. Instead, it's like why I'm doing anatomy is because of this and that. And that person will also feel the same. Like, oh, I also felt that way. And so I hope that you use the reason for why in order to complete your anatomy business. Thank you so much. Let's just uh, give another big round of applause for our amazing um, Royal Master for that uh, very detailed speech. And so this was a, a very good part series today who's talking about how to explain your business, right? And the importance of explaining your business uh, because you're all here to learn how to grow your business, right? And so he's shown the process to do that and why it's important. And then a lot, he also talked about sponsorship and the keys to becoming a proper sponsor, right? In order for you to be a sponsor, you need to take the steps necessary and you know pay the price, do the things necessary to uh, earn your partner's respect and uh, pretty much give them the support that they need to grow not only their business, but your business as well. And so let's just once again, thank our Royal Master for that amazing speech. And so we'll just have uh, one more session after this uh, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from him soon after that. And so we'll end it off with our company motto. So if you can all join me for that, and then we'll just take a quick picture. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Let's begin. Cherish the spirit. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.